Hello students, let us continue our chapter that is atoms and molecules. This is the second part of video. If you haven't watched the first part, just go through the first part and then move on to the second part. So let's begin the class. In the previous class, we studied about the two types of laws and today we are going to talk about the atom. So what is an atom? Okay, so anything that takes first of all when we talk about the atom we need to know what is a matter okay so matter is anything that takes up space and has mass Matlab, whatever the thing which takes up the space or a place and it has a mass or the weight so it is called as a matter so in other way how does this space is taken up and why is there a mass so in other words, what you can say, all matter is made up of atoms. So whatever the space and the mass that is present in a matter, it is because of the atoms. So atoms are the building blocks of the matter, sort of how bricks are the building blocks of the houses. Just the way our house bricks, so any matter, matter can be anything, any kind of object. Okay, so it is made up of atoms. So what are the characteristics of atoms? So number one is they are the smallest particle of matter. Sabse chote paaye jate hain. Then all elements are made up of tiny particles called the atom. So you heard about the term elements also. Okay. So all those elements are made up of atoms. Atoms are very small in size and cannot be seen through the naked eye. So whatever, whenever you see the matter around us, like you cannot you can see the matter but what is its composition you cannot see it so atom does not exist in free state in nature but atom takes part in chemical reaction okay it is not present in the free state nature but it takes part in the chemical reaction so the properties of matter depends upon the characteristics of atom so whatever the type of atom is present that determines the properties of a matter atoms are the building blocks of the element similar to the brick which combines together to make a building which I discussed just now. The size of the atoms is indicated by its radius. For example, if this is the atom, so how much is the radius will decide the size of an atom. So in ancient time, eight, eight, uh, atoms are cons were considered to be indivisible. Like uh, just because we have studied further about the atoms and we know about its further divisions. But in those time, in ancient time, the atoms were considered to be indivisible. That means it cannot be further divided. They were, they were considered to be the smallest particle of matter. So here atom, atom is the smallest particle of an element. They may or may not exist independently and retains all the chemical properties they can be present in free state or they cannot be present and but it has its chemical properties so atoms are very small in size smaller than anything we can imagine or compare with so what atomic radius is measured in nanometers okay nanometers is very small quantity okay so one nanometer is equals to 10 raised to the power minus 9 meter okay and one meter is equals to 10 raised to the power 9 nanometer. So you can see how small this would be. So the atomic radius of the atom of hydrogen is 10 raised to the power minus 10 meter. Okay. And in the same way for the water 10 raised to the power minus 9 meter. So you can see the atoms are so small that cannot be visible. Okay. <clears throat> So symbols of some elements as proposed by Daltons. In olden days, they used to name the element or they had the symbols of some of the elements and it was proposed by the Dalton. For example, hydrogen, we know it is H2, right? So in olden days, they did not use this word H2. They had the symbols. For example, you can see a circle with a dot is the hydrogen and this upside down Y is the phosphorus. Then the C inside a circle is the copper and this is how the gold, carbon, sulfur, lead, platina, oxygen, iron, silver and mercury. They had these symbols. In olden days they did not write uh, copper for Cu, lead for Pb and uh, silver for Ag like that. 
we have now symbolic forms but in olden days they had some of the symbols in a di diagrammatic representation so these were the diagrammatic representations or you can say symbols of some of the elements proposed by dalton so the symbols of atoms of different elements okay so so the symbols of some elements are formed from the first letter of the name and a letter appearing later in the name so whatever the short form that we have made for the symbols of the atoms it is by the first letter of the name and then the later name okay for example chlorine can you see cl okay zinc zn it is denoted by the letter capital z and small letter n so some have been taken so this is one way or in the second form it is some of them have been taken from the names of the elements in latin german or greek so in other languages also latin german and greek their names are like the symbols are being used for example iron instead of i and o it is fe why because its name is ferrum the same with sodium instead of s or d or s or o it is na why because the name is natrium in the same way potassium instead of p the name is kalium that is why the symbol is k okay so these are some of the uh, various symbols of the atoms of various elements okay so the symbols of elements are represented by the letters as i told you and then <clears throat> one letter symbol of some elements are represented by two letters some are by one letter and some are by two letters so the very uh, important thing that you, you need to remember is when you, we are using the symbol so one letter it should be written in capital letter and if the symbol has two letters then the first letter should be capital letter and the second letter should be small letter for example aluminum a is capital l is small argon a is capital r is small barium b is capital a is small boron it is only one capital letter bromine capital b and small r calcium capital c and small a in this way the first letter would be in capital letters and the next letter would be in small letters so whatever the symbolic form you would see if it is in only one letter it would be denoted by the capital letter and if it is two letter words then the first one would be capital letter and the another one would be the small letter so the symbols of some elements formed from the first letter of the name and a letter appearing later in the name the same thing you can see aluminum argon barium boron bromine calcium ca carbon c chlorine cl cobalt co copper cu fluorine f gold au hydrogen h iodine i iron fe lead pb magnesium mg neon ne nitrogen n oxygen o potassium k silicon si silver ag sodium na sulfur sr si uranium u and zinc is zn after talking about the atoms and then its symbols let's talk about the atomic mass what is the atomic mass so although it is possible to measure the actual mass of an atom it is more convenient to use relative masses what is the relative mass the relative mass of an atom is a comparison of an atom's mass to the mass of carbon 12 atom so uh, whenever we are talking about the atomic masses it is difficult to calculate the masses so that is why they have taken out the comparison system and the mass is determined by comparing it with the carbon 12 atom so the carbon 12 atom was chosen as the standard unit for measuring the relative atomic masses so you need to understand carbon 12 carbon 12 it was the standard unit of measurement when we are talking about the measurement of the atomic masses so relative atomic mass ar okay so just another way of saying how heavy different atoms are compared with the mass of one atom of carbon so whenever we are talking about any atomic mass of any kind of atom it will be always compared with the carbon 12 okay regular carbon so what is the mass number of carbon it is the 12 and the atomic number would be 6 why it will come 6 because 
Six is the number of protons present inside the atom. Till now we studied the atom was indivisible. Okay, but in later studies it was found the atom contained further few components such as electrons, protons, and neutrons. Okay, so as electrons like they have the negligible uh, like negligible like the quantity that is why they are not uh, considered even the, as they are neutral they are also not uh, like uh, taken into the account only the number of protons are taken into the account and the number of protons present inside the atom rep uh, represents the atomic number then what does the atomic mass number represent the total number of protons and neutrons found in an atoms nucleus so in an atom there is a nucleus and inside this nucleus there is the neutron protons and the electrons around the nucleus inside the nucleus it is neutrons and protons and around it it is electrons since the atoms are very small in size its mass is very small so determining its mass is very difficult so the mass of the atom is always compared to the standard atom and as i told you what is the standard atom it is the carbon 12 atom whose atomic number is 12 mu atomic mass unit okay so one atomic mass unit is 1 by 12th of the mass of the carbon atom so the average mass of one atom of an element compared with 1 by 12th mass of the carbon uh, 12th carbon atom so this is the atomic mass of an element and this is how we define it so by comparison they have found out as the hydrogen the mass is 1, carbon is the 12, nitrogen is 14, oxygen is 16, then sodium is 23. And this way, other elements also, the atomic mass were calculated. So, here is the revision. Uh, atoms, atomic number is represented by Z and it includes the number of protons present in the nucleus. Then atomic symbol is the X, one or two letter code uniquely related to the atomic number and then mass number is a total number of nucleons protons plus neutrons atomic number it includes only the number of protons but the mass number it includes the number of protons as well as neutrons so x is the any kind of element it can be simple if it is chlorine you will write it here as cl so a is the mass number and z is the atomic number so here you can see we have taken the example of carbon okay carbon contains the six protons and electrons and neutrons okay is 14 minus 6 equals to 8 neutrons are there okay so when we will uh, like do, uh, minus the six protons out of it why because the neutrons uh, here is the neutrons plus protons when you will minus the protons they automatically will come to know about the number of neutrons okay here also nitrogen 7 is the protons and 15 is the mass number so neutrons 8 would be there so this is how we determine the chemical symbols the atomic number and the atomic masses so x is the element then z is the atomic number and a is the atomic mass so this is how the representation occurs over here so that's it all for today we'll be meeting up in our next video till then bye bye everyone